Hi, everyone. I'm Julie, a UX strategist at Sparkbox, and today I'm going to talk about a few ways that a UX team can support a product champion, or as I like to say, how product champions can harness UX superpowers to make excellent products. So being a product champion is a lot of work. Whether you call yourself a product manager, a BA, an agile product owner, you don't have to go it alone. If you have a UX team, collaborating with them can lighten the load. Today, we'll talk about three areas where product champions can rely on UX skills, researching, generating concepts, and gathering feedback. We'll also talk about what to do if your organization doesn't have UX at all. So let's dive into researching. Product champions prioritize features. So as a product champion, you may be tasked with prioritizing features for development. And you'll be weighing what your customers want versus what will bring value to the business. And you'll need to back up your choices with data and research. You might think that this market research, customer research, and competitive research all falls on you, and certainly some of it does. You have to know your market and your customer. But there are likely other people in your organization doing similar work, and this Group is the UX team. UX researchers specialize in listening to users to find out what they need. Your UX team may have a stockpile of qualitative insights from conducting years worth of research activities like interviews and observations. Your UX team has probably observed and interviewed users throughout their life cycle from having never heard of your product to being a super user. Your UX people took a lot of notes and photos and have a wealth of information. It may even be in a database somewhere, so find out where this information is captured and get access to it. Your UX team has also done some usability testing, so they've watched people use tools and they've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. So ask them what they know. Sometimes insights get captured in personas and journey maps. But more often, in my experience, this information is trapped in the UX people's brains. Talk to them about what they know about your users and ask them to make these artifacts if they haven't already. UX people are also canvassing the competition. It might not be the same type of competitive research you do. Like you might be looking at competitor XYZ to see what their subscription model is, if they look like they're pivoting to a different market. What UX people do for competitive research is focusing on how competitors or products with the similar types of user flows are presenting information and how easy it is to perform tasks. UX competitive research doesn't have to be just one way. Ask the UX team for the research they've done so far and consider partnering with them to conduct more research. Share what you have, they'll share what they have, you'll have a good mix of information. And depending on the UX team, they may have access to survey results, demographic information, web analytics, screen recordings, all sorts of things. So ask them what they have. And if they don't have this information, they may know of another team that does. Team up with your UX researchers and you may find that you're able to pull existing research or you can have them run point on custom original research for you so that you can knock it off your to-do list. And if you like your own research more than the research your UX team does, then please do them a huge favor and share your research with them. It will only make the product better. And maybe you'll find out that they just don't have the bandwidth to take on this amount of research themselves. They just need your support to prove that this role is something that's needed on their team. So go ahead and share your research. Next, let's talk about generating concepts. Are you the kind of product champion who sketches a screen or a flow for the team? Maybe you have a picture of exactly what you want to see in your head. Having a vision or a drawing is a handy way to communicate for sure. But should you be responsible for more than this? No. No, you shouldn't. You have much better things to do. Sketch if you must sketch, but quickly loop in a UX designer to generate concepts for you. 
You might be thinking, the last time I gave a sketch to the UX designer, they just redrew it in their own design tool. Whatever. I don't need them. Perhaps this is because you asked them to make a wireframe or a design out of your sketch. You did not harness their superpower. Here's how to approach it instead. Phrase it like the problem you want to solve. For example, let's say you have research that shows people are canceling their subscription to your product because they think your product doesn't offer something it actually has. You may think the solution is to add a big button to the dashboard to promote the feature. So you go ahead and mention that to your UX person, but then ask them to propose a few other concepts to solve the problem. When the UX designer shares the approaches you asked for, some will be a good fit and some won't be. But you can bet that you'll have some decent options to consider that might be better than adding a button to the dashboard. So in summary, bad. Hey, UX person, we need a button on the dashboard. Maybe put it right there. Thanks. Good. Hey, UX person, here's a problem we're having and a little bit of background on some research we have. A button came to my mind immediately, but I'm sure there are other solutions. Could you come up with a handful of them for our meeting next week? You'll get better results when you harness UX imagination. If it's a bigger feature, the UX designer will be able to create the end-to-end -end wireframe and design documentation, and they'll think through all the gotchas, maybe even talk about it with other teams. This is a much better way to work for everyone involved. When you workshop the winner as the team and don't just go with a single gut idea, you'll come to a, a more winning approach. And for all you UX people out there, have you ever had a client who, after you present a wireframe, asks you for another wireframe of an idea that you had already disqualified because it didn't make sense or it wasn't as good as what you were showing? Here they are asking for it. That's super annoying. When I present work to clients or stakeholders, I like to show more than one well-considered option. I will even show an obvious solution that I know doesn't work because it gives me the opportunity to explain why it's not the right solution to our problem. Much better discussion ensues because there's a lot less second guessing. So take a minute to show your thought process to your stakeholders. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about our last superpower, which is gathering customer feedback. As the product champion, you'll track revenue and calculate ROI. You'll know how many people use the newly released feature or bought the new product. But will you know why customers did or didn't buy what you were selling? Tap the UX team to gather qualitative feedback and share it with you. Usability test results actually collect a lot of this information and it's pretty neat. So. In addition to testing designs before anything's coded or code before it's released, I like to usability test features once they're out in the wild, being used by real customers. There's something special about assigning a real customer a task that involves a new feature and seeing what happens when they actually use the tool. So work usability testing your live product into your plans and into your budget. So once upon a time, I worked on a customer service call center application. We made an app that helps the customer service rep accurately and efficiently resolve customer inquiries. Simple enough. Here's what happened. We had a new product with highly regulated billing. The bills were confusing, the product was expensive, and some would even say the product was life critical. This billing thing resulted in high call volumes. Unfortunately, to give the customer an answer required the rep to gather information across multiple screens and do a little math on a scratch pad to explain the bill. Click, 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 math, math, math. Fraught with room for error. The product team decided that the quick fix was to assemble a new screen for the app that compiled all of the necessary information, did the math, and solved the problem in one click. So why was our product champion so upset? Even after this launched, the product champion kept hearing complaints about how long this question was taking to answer, that there were still errors, and that customer satisfaction had not improved at all. So what was going on? 
Armed with this research question from the product champion, the UX team added a task to a usability study that would test our newly released screen so that we could see what was going on. And what did we find out? Two of the six reps we tested didn't use this new screen at all. They still did it the old way with many clicks and a calculator. When I asked them why, it was because they didn't realize the new screen even existed. Nobody had told them. Whoops. Of those who were actually using the new screen, a few were double checking the information on the screen with the old method because they had such low trust in the system. They'd been burned before. The answer they were giving the customer was high stakes and it had to be right. They didn't wanna take any chances. We realized that adding a little more unnecessary information to our new screen and showing our work on the math problem actually went a long way to building trust. We had made it too streamlined, and this was a case where a little friction in the design increased the system's credibility. And, of course, we also uncovered that communication issue between the product team and the customer service team that could quickly be resolved that day. Hey, this screen exists. You can use it. The moral of this story is the feature wasn't a failure, but without the usability test, it easily could have been written off as one. The product stakeholders were ready to throw it out and start over. Because the product champion had videos from usability testing to show the stakeholders, they had immediate buy-in for the fixes because the stakeholders could see the problem and seeing is believing. So whether your UX team is intentionally testing newly released features or they are just acquiring this off-topic information while they usability test or interview user about something totally unrelated, this customer feedback is out there and you can unlock it to improve your understanding of how the product is or isn't being used. And you can use it to inform future features and products. So wrapping up, you may have sat through this and thought, well, there's no UX here, right? Or maybe you're the person who's responsible for all the UX work. First, if you are doing all the UX work and managing the product, Start making a case for more support. You can contract with a freelancer or an agency if you can't swing a permanent employee at this time. A skilled UX freelancer or agency often has great ROI because they operate outside of your organization's day-to-day -day thinking and employee overhead. Ask around your network for recommendations. Here at Sparkbox, we do a lot of short-term focused engagements just to get teams unstuck. It's not unheard of. But more likely, your organization has people doing UX just without the title. It might be the digital strategist who has done a mountain of research, or a visual designer who is a whiz at thoughtful interactions, or a BA who deeply understands the customers and talks to them often. Find these people and hear their stories. Bring them in from the cold and include them in your product planning, or even work to formalize their role and their contributions to your product team. So, in conclusion, ask for all the research that your UX people have. Ask generally about what they do. Remember that if you ask too specifically, if you just say, hey, give me all your personas and journey maps, they might say, oh, we don't do those. But when you ask if they do user interviews, they may answer yes and give you summarized findings and transcripts. Ask your UX people for multiple concepts to solve a problem. It won't take too much time if they're low fidelity, and it will improve not only the quality of the solution, but it also increases collaboration and trust. And ask your UX people for help gathering customer feedback. They may be doing this informally anyway, so leverage it. The more FaceTime with customers the UX team and the product team has, the more thoughtful your decisions will be. Questions that you ask your UX team are great conversation starters. So start some conversations with your UX people today. Your role as a product champion probably has a lot of overlap with the UX team, and you have the same goals, satisfied customers, getting lots of people to use the product, and working at a company that makes enough money to pay your salaries. So collaborate and build bridges. You both want the same thing, and together you'll be able to get much more done with the time you have if you establish a bond with UX. Thank you, everyone.